Well, welcome to Backstage with Jeffrey Morrissey. I'm your host, Jeff Morrissey. I'm joined today by Langhorn Slim. Langhorn, how are you doing? Good day, sir. I'm well. That's what we like to hear. How could you not be well? It's a beautiful day in Newport, a festival you know well. Uh, who are you looking forward to seeing today, or who uh, have you enjoyed that you've already seen? Well, I just got here, mm -hmm. so I, I haven't seen hardly anybody. <laughs> But uh, the Lone Bellow are playing, I guess, right about now. So we'll go out and see them after this. Mm -hmm. And then my buddy Nicole Atkins is playing, so I'll go and see her. Nice. And then I think it's our time to play. So hopefully I'll get to see some some other folks as well, you know. Exactly, exactly. There's a big sort of surprise thing at 6.15. I heard so. it's the Ramones. The Ramones? Oh, that's a good guess. Yeah, that's I've heard guess. the Ramones are coming back. Yeah, or uh, Neil Young or Bob Dylan. That's a, that's a I've heard Neil Young, Bob Dylan, and the Ramones are, are going <laughs> to be making a... a, a big appearance here so that's very exciting see one journalist here started the Tom Petty hologram rumor which I think was my favorite Newport yeah. rumor to date um, but uh, that could happen it could happen you would know better than anyone else who played this festival so many times do you have a favorite memory of, of Newport or either a favorite after party memory anything like that I have many favorite memories and last year we got to do an after party with Charles Bradley which was oh, uh, wow immense honor and a thrill and and he passed uh, shortly thereafter mm -hmm. so that's something that I will cherish for the rest of my days but this festival is not to be uh, corny it's just true it's chock full of great memories it, it is I think uh, the festival that sort of most connects audience and uh, performers and sort of the way it should be in my opinion the so. way it should be. I agree. And there was a big unannounced set last night that turned out to be Mumford & Sons, which is a great surprise for me. If you could fly anyone in for that unannounced set, who would you have playing the fourth stage at 615? Well, if I could fly anybody to, to play it? Yeah. I like where you were. Neil Young would, Neil Young? would, would be way up there, yeah. That'd be if I could bring somebody back, maybe Bob Marley. Bob Marley. Otis Redding. Oh, those are good ones. Uh, probably a few others. Bob Marley and the Ramones. But Bob Marley and the Ramones. I would love to have seen the Ramones, man. Um, but yeah, I've never seen uh, Neil Young play, so Neil would be would be way up there. Of course. Now, you gave one of my favorite quotes ever, um, that in the studio or, or at a show, your goal is to always be a real raw motherfucker, which I, I, I love that. It's a high bar. How do you make sure that you're attaining that, that you're being as authentic as you possibly can be? I, it is the only bar. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. I think you, you know, there's a roomy quote. You, you must break your heart until it opens. So I don't know if that if I don't take that as like a romantic breaking of heart, but it's a journey through life to just peel the layers to try to be. Miles Davis said it takes a long time to to find your own voice. That's Miles Davis. That's pretty crazy, right? Yeah, seriously. So I I that's the journey as as an artist, I think, and mm -hmm. uh, and maybe just as a human to try to strip the layers of conditioning that we've learned since we're children. Mm -hmm. I think we're all born whole. Through living, we fall apart in ways, and then we try to put the pieces back together. So that's what I'm trying to do, yeah. slowly but surely. Slowly but surely. It's a work couple in progress. A couple steps forward, a couple steps backward. Uh, but yeah, if you're not being real and raw, uh, what, uh, what are you doing? Oh yeah, of course, of course. I totally agree with you. And one of the things that I love the most about this uh, new album, Lost at Last, Volume 1, is the sort of embracing the gray and the unknowns and sort of going, I, I may not have all the answers and that's okay. How did you sort of get to that stage where it wasn't... I've always been highly skeptical of anybody that pretends to have all of the answers. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I think with my music, some people think that I have some answers. And uh, when I have the opportunity to meet them, I am very uh, open with the fact this is sort of my own therapy. It's, it's for myself and I would imagine if I'm being true to myself, that's what would connect to a listener is because we're all, whatever we're being taught and told at the moment, we're sort of all uh, in this together mm -hmm. and we're all freaking out to some extent in, you know, in our heads. Oh, yeah. And therefore, um, if you're being true to that, I think it, it connects with, with other people because it's something, it's, it's a human condition that we all sort of, share the, the 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 beauty and the terror it takes it all right it the takes lightness it all. the darkness it's it's how we choose to dance with it 
That's one of my favorite uh, Leonard Cohen quotes. It was like, uh, there are cracks in everything that's how the light gets in. Absolutely. What, what an incredible line. What an incredible man. One of my favorite quotes from you is, um, my interest is how we can be, as people, uh, rebel against these ideas together to find the commonality and sort of a reference in that to playing live. That is an, an incredibly high standard and sort of a lot to ask for in a stage show. So how is that something that you're trying to accomplish on the stage? What are you sort of actively thinking about to make that the environment that your shows are? I try hard not to actively think, <laughs> Okay. to be honest with you. And to, to come from, I wish I had uh, better words for it, a soul place, a heart place, a spirit place mm -hmm. uh, than uh, intellectualizing what I'm gonna do on stage. When I do that, I get myself into trouble. Yeah. But I think you know a show, it, it, it's there for entertainment, and, and that's beautiful. But I do believe that, uh, and this isn't for me personally taking myself too seriously, which I probably do, mm -hmm. but just for the, the power that can be a, a performance, that the, a, a great connection can be made mm -hmm. with people that might not normally agree or think the same way. Uh, people can forget the shoes that they put on that day, that they might have spent an hour wondering what shoes to put on, and just be... The animals that we are, the freaks that we are, you know, and um, and if that, when that happens, when that magical thing happens, there's an elevated energy that is uh, that is spiritual in nature. I believe. Of course. And yeah. so I, I take that, I take that quite seriously. Well, and that was sort of another thing that I was going to ask. You, you strike me as someone who takes their work seriously, but might not necessarily take themselves seriously. You're a very down-to-earth, open person. Um, do you Are you one that just sort of sets high standards, high bars for yourself in your music? I think most people that do this set very high standards True. for themselves and are very sensitive as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you do it for your entire life, you never want to be. You never want to go backwards. So you want your your next record to be your best record. You want every. You know. You play a show every single night almost. You want it to be the best show that you've ever played, whether there's 25 people there or 25,000 people there. It doesn't really matter, you know. Um, so that's always been the way that it's been since I was a kid. When I was playing at open mics, I want closed my eyes and thought I was in Madison Square Garden or something, you know? You Not that I really want to play Madison Square I mean, I would. That would be a tough venue to play. Yeah, yeah. it would be a tough venue, but do you know what I mean? It's just uh, to, to give it my all no matter what. To give it your all no matter what. Well, that is what you're going to do at the Harbor Stage at 5.05 today. I don't want to keep you I from I better. It. You better. I'll I think be I'm going to get up and sing with Lone Bellow, too, so we should we should head over there. We should head over there. I, I can't agree more. So I'll make this my last question for you. Who are you listening to right now? Who has your ear? Uh, Twain, uh, who's mm. playing this festival, also plays in, in my Lost at Last band. Oh, really? I and uh, it's not just a cheap plug. I <laughs> listen to mainly dead people, to be yep. honest. And there's a few people that, uh, there's a lot of people at this festival that I'm fans of and lucky enough to be friends with. But Twain, in particular, his music really hits me hard. There's a guy in Nashville na uh, that goes by Skyway Man. Okay. I'm in love with his music. Um, and there's a bunch, I mean... People say that, that good music is is long gone or dead. It, it's it's here. It's with us. It is. And I think with the with the political climate and uh, with what's going on around us, I think there's a lot of great art and it's an opportunity for a lot of great music to to be birthed out of. So I I'm looking. I'm optimistic about that part of this whole interesting situation that we're in. And it's albums like Lost at Last, Volume 1 by Langhorn Slim that makes me share that optimism that you have. Langhorn, thank you so much for the time today. I really Brother, it is my pleasure. Thank you.